So today we are moving on to the final level in the Great Expedition event. So I haven't really been updating my event progress too much and basically I've just been opening most of the chests on every level but we finally got into the final chest on level 5 and that means that we can move on to level 6. So there is the key. Let us move on to the next level. So, for that, we do also get a purple chest. Come on, this could be legendary. This could be something so good. Come on, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Game, you know you want to be nice. Please? 12, look, I'll take it. It's not extraordinary. But it's definitely better than nothing. I'll take it. I appreciate that quite a lot. So, anyway, moving on to level 6. Of course, the main reward for level 6 is this kelp dragon. But... The overall main event reward is going to be this cherry dragon for opening up every single chest. So since we've opened up most chests on the previous levels, we won't have to go back for too much at the end of the day. But you can see the kelp dragon over here just sitting in the middle, just, I don't know, minding his own business, doing whatever. So at the beginning of this event, it is very straightforward. There's only one path for you to take, which is actually kind of nice because you don't have to use your brain too much so if you're like trying to do this at like one in the morning ain't too shabby so then we get onto our first fight here which is pretty easy but we do have the axolotl dragon there and the axolotl dragon was available in the recent weekend event it's a pretty cool dragon overall but unfortunately for him he's now dead arena and we don't have any more points to go any further than this fight here but this is where you have to start making the hard decisions. So, first thing you'll notice is there's a trio stack of fights here and a chest there. Is That's probably going to be relatively cheap. And um, there are chests that take a really long winding route. And normally I try and avoid those until the last part of the event. Uh, you can also go to the right and there's a couple of fights and a chest there which isn't too expensive. But the one up here is quite a long route as well. So... I don't know, maybe the first chest we'll go to is this one down here next to Mr. Kelp. Maybe he'll give us some, I don't know, bonus chance. That's not how it works, but, you know, one can hope and pray at the very least. And if you are curious to what the allowed elements were on this final level, well, it tells us on the DML wiki here. So it shows us the dragons that we're going to be facing. So we're going to have to face Hathor, Apollo, hashtag free Apollo, uh, but... For the most part, Shadow and Light are the most used elements. In fact, they are seen in every single fight on this level, apparently. So, if you've got Shadow and if you've got Light, you are dead set for this event. Which means that we are very lucky and we can finish off any fight that we want in the entire event. So, I'm one of the lucky ones. If you're not one of the lucky ones and you don't have the points that... Or you don't have the elements that you need to do the event, then unfortunately it's going to kind of suck for you... Because if we take a look at the minimum egglets and maximum egglets required, minimum egglets would be 37,000, which is a lot of resets. Maximum egglets includes, you know, if you have to do, or if you have to skip the fights, if you go the wrong way, stuff like that. But if you have to skip the fights, it's probably going to cost you like, I don't know, about 70,000, 60,000-ish. And uh, that is a lot more difficult than half of that amount so if you can level up your dragons to an even level at least a shadow or light dragon to sort of balance it out hopefully that'll help you out but apart from that it's gonna be a tough tough event for you to finish off if you don't have those two elements available to you but you know that's just how it is in castle events sometimes you get lucky with the elements required sometimes you don't and if you're wondering which dragons you should use to get the 600 points from this event well unfortunately it's not really that simple because they changed the breeding for the previous events but then coming back to this event they've changed it back to the old way again so the best thing that you can really breed is either stuff like the nightmare dragon that gives 466 points we could see that on the left here or you can breed stuff like the demonic which is an eight hour breeding time with vip 10 hours normally and come back midway through the resets and that tends to be the tactic that i usually go with or, if you just don't care, you can just try and breed, well, any dragon really that you need, like epics. You can also try and go for the dragon of the week if you want, although sometimes it is going to screw you over a little bit. But if you want to actually get something done in the middle of the event, it's not even too bad just going for the, the weekly breeding while the event's operating. I mean, if you were going to miss it because of breeding points, you probably weren't going to finish the event anyway. So, 
You know, that is what you should expect from level 6 of the event. Don't forget that you do also have the Floral Fury event to be doing. And towards the end of this, these dragons do start to get quite a, a lot higher in level. And it's because it's based off of your own player level as to how high the enemies go. Which um, is kind of annoying. But remember that if you're level 70 plus, then you will be in the highest bracket for this event. Which does mean that you will need around about level 40. Or your Pattaya Dragon will have to be around about level 40 to make that work. But do remember that even though we have the Pattaya Dragon at level 30, I have enchanted the Pattaya Dragon three times. So it's essentially a level 36 dragon at the moment. And it's really, really upgraded. So I don't imagine we'd have to feed it any really much more than this. I am going to bump it up to, I think, level 33. I'm going to pop him up to level 33 and see if we can do the fights. If we need to use Dragon Fury, I will. Because unlike a lot of people, I don't have any map left to do. Which means that I've got 52 Dragon Fury Essence just sitting in there. So um, if we could use that in the fights, that would be great. But... I, I wouldn't want to use Dragon Fury Essence anyway, if it was allowed or not, if I was still progressing on the map, but luckily for me, everything is complete, which means I can basically do, well, whatever the heck I want. Oh, and one other thing regarding the Great Expedition event, do remember that now, if you've gotten to level 6, that means that every single level is now available for you to go through, which means... Now, if you want to go for that bunny badge, you can now go for it. So, for example, if you start off at the beginning of the map, you'll see that there is a bunny on the left-hand side next to a rock here. Because you do need to click every single bunny rabbit if you want to get that badge from the event. There is a really, really hidden one right here. Do you see it? It's so bugged. It's like underneath a tree stump. But regardless, there is a bunny rabbit right there at the beginning. So then if we take the right-hand side, there's another one near another tree stump. We've got a painted one next to the Easter eggs. We've got a white one up next to the white flowered tree. And, it, you know, you can just scour the whole area. and They're pretty obvious, most of them, apart from that one that's just hidden under the tree stump. Sometimes it looks like there's a rabbit there, but it's actually just a mushroom, which is kind of weird. But you need to do this for every single level. Like, if you haven't done it in level 5, go and click all of the bunny rabbits in level 5 as well. Just make sure that you've gone through and checked every single one of them. I think the wiki goes through and lists the locations of all of these bunny rabbits as well. But to people that already have the badge, it's sort of pointless. I mean, they're cute. You can you can just tap them all and hope that they follow you around and you know, just go, oh, what a cute little bunny. But it's not gonna be tremendously impressive or anything like that. And they do reset every time you exit and re-enter as well, so don't forget about that, but you know, just making you aware you don't want to miss out on a cool event badge if you don't have to. So make sure you're going back and clicking all of these little rabbit arenas and um, look at this! We've got a congregation! Okay, I didn't think it'd be as spooky as that, but the Kelp Dragon is basically the rabbit leader now. He is their master. If he just sits there, they will form a gigantic ring around him, like the rabbit overlord that he is. Um, it's almost like a pentagram. Come on, come on, Blondie, come on, come back. There you go. A complete halt. He can't escape anymore. How about that? Well, that is certainly an intriguing way to continue, but it's just the idea behind this. It started off with ghosts and weird stuff in the Halloween event, and look at them all. It's like they're going to school, you know, little kiddies, where you're like, everyone get in the line, get in the line. It's, oh, it's, it is pretty adorable, but... <laughs> so random. I, I think it would be really cool if they had, like, baby dragons, like, ba baby chronoids following you around. Okay, that has to happen now. I'm sorry, I, I just... I, I need to have that happen. But, you know, that is the general gist behind what is happening in the events and what you should expect from the events. I think this event is just the same as what we've had before, so it's not exceptionally difficult and it's not tremendously easy at the same time. It's just a, a normal castle event for the most part. So as long as you don't miss too many resets, and as long as you have the elements that you need to do level 6, it won't be too much of an issue. 
because it's it's sort of a problem when you don't have the elements that are required for the final levels. Like, it's not so much of a big deal if you don't have the elements required for, say, level 2 or level 3. Because you can always get around those quite easily when you come back. But if you don't have the elements required for the final level, that's, that's when it gets to be the most costly. And this is why I talk about teams quite a lot. And I talk about how you have to choose the right team because you don't want to end up getting to, you know, the final level in the Great Expedition with, like, a dust dragon and a ceremony and a fire dragon because you're just not going to have enough elements to help you through the event. Like, even though, say, you used a Murano dragon, say you used an autumn dragon, and say you used, I don't know, uh, an Aphrodite dragon, for example, you might be repeating the legendary element and you might be repeating the plant, but the dragons are just so good that they compensate for that, whereas if you just used a dust dragon, it's just sort of pointless because they're weak and they're not going to help you out in most of the events. And plus, if you pick an element like Shadow, again, Andy's really good for this, it means that a lot of the events that are meant to be challenging to the lower level players like this one, they're actually quite a lot easier because, you know, I'm never going to not have Shadow on my team, for example. But it's just food for thought. Make sure you try and make your team as varied as you possibly can. Because it, it sucks just missing out on special event dragons purely because you trained your team a certain way. It's the same thing with the dungeon. If you don't have your team set up in at least two dragons being an even level and good enough to do it, well, it kind of ends up screwing you over quite a lot. Because if they ever do fix the dungeon, you know, give it this revamp that is needed for ages, there might be tons of new dragons and you might not be able to get them. So just think about your teams. Maybe you've already got your team sorted, in which case don't worry about it. But if you are building your team still, or think about what dragons to use, try and make it as varied as you can and pick dragons with good stats. Because if you don't think about getting them tomorrow or the day after. Like, getting good legendaries and good divines takes a long time and a lot of waiting and a lot of patience waiting for them to come through. So wait for the next divine event, see what divines come along. Maybe there'll be something really cool for you. But regardless, I think that is gonna do me for now. So for now, thank you very much for joining me. Good luck with your keys if you're still trying to get to that final level. But keep logging in and before you know it, you'll get two new epics, which is pretty damn good. So for now, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you being here. And until next time, I will see you then.